I'd like to welcome you all this evening to our special presentation. Not only a great movie, but the filmmaker is with us as well. And he'll be available for uh, a talk and, and uh, questions afterwards. So we want to get it going pretty soon. I'm Eric Lewis. I, I'm one of the founders of the uh, Coalition for Frack Free Tennessee, based here in Nashville. Uh, we have some materials out in the lobby if you want information on fracking. We've been in existence about a year and we're part of a, a statewide coalition. Uh, it comes under various names but uh, the TNOC coalition is one of the names which stands for Tennessee Oil and Gas and it includes at least eight statewide and nationwide, nationwide groups and uh, we, we claimed a small victory this, this uh, summer with the uh, UT uh, pulling its proposal to frack on public lands. Yes. So much pressure was brought on by folks like you uh, that they uh, that we I think we scared off the industry, and so they didn't want to get involved under UT's terms with us breathing down their necks. So no one gave them a bid. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, one of our big co-sponsors here and uh, see what he has to say. Thank you, Eric. I'm Charles White. Um, I'm with the Sierra Club uh, here in Tennessee. And uh, we want to thank Frack Free Tennessee as well as Southern, Southern Energy Network, uh, Cumberland Greens Bio Regional Council, um, and everybody that's, that's helped sponsor this event. Uh, thanks you all for coming out and, and bringing some help and, and support. Um, I want to let you guys know a couple cool things that have happened with the Sierra Club uh, related to fracking uh, this year. Here in Tennessee, we've adopted a resolution as the Tennessee chapter of the Sierra Club um, for a ban of fracking on public lands. Um, after much debate and discussion, this is kind of the, the thing that we came out with, so that's really exciting and we're, we're glad to be, uh, to be moving in that direction. Um, and then the National Sierra Club uh, Council of Club Leaders met recently in San Francisco and they, uh, through much discussion and debate, decided to adopt a stance for um, a moratorium on fracking period in, uh, in the country, which is really exciting. Uh, and, uh, in addition to that, they also decided that they would support any states who wanted to adopt a banned stance uh, within that state. And so that's passed the Council of Club Leaders. It still has to go to the Board of Directors for final approval, but we're really excited that 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 um, language is, is coming out and, and the Sierra Club is getting on board with so many others uh, you know that are the Americans Against Fracking and everything so it's really cool. Um, we, uh, we recently had uh, the 2013 Fractivist Conference uh, up in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, we had folks out from 16 different states ranging from four months old to the early 80s. My friends like what an amazing span. Uh, people from all over the southeast, folks from Iowa, New York, Texas, even Oregon, um, all coming together and, and discussing fracking and um, everything that's been going on with that. And some of the things that I pulled out of that that I think that we can focus on as a movement um, that, that can create regional and even national collaboration is looking at the transportation of the, the fuel itself. Um, and so we need to focus on pipelines. Um, you know, there's, there's all these different pipelines that are moving natural gas around, pipelines that are being proposed to move natural gas, natural gas liquids, all these types of things. Um, and I, I think that if we can stop the pipelines and stop the flow, that's, that's a really important victory. Um, and then another thing for me that, that came out of it that's really important is there's currently only like one operational liquid natural gas export facility in the United States, and it's down in Louisiana at Port Charles. Um, a second one has been approved for construction up at Cove Point in Maryland, and you know it's it's not scheduled to be finished until 2017. But if that goes online, y'all like floodgates open, Marcella Shell, Utica Shell, all these other shells, just just all over, and, and the price of natural gas skyrockets. And I don't think that's good for any of us because then it becomes a global commodity. It affects our you know our our home prices and things like that. Um, so I think that that's a, a big strategy is to stop that terminal from being built. Um, so, you know, if we can stop the infrastructure, it stops the flow that, you know, they're not, they're not fracking as much right now as they will if all of these things are online. Um, and, uh, and then the other kind of big thing that, that doesn't get talked about, I think, enough uh, when we talk about fracking is frack sand mining. Um, folks in Wisconsin have just been obliterated with frack sand mining. Um, 
which is, as you may know, in the fracking process, they mix the chemicals in the water and a lot of the sand, and most of that sand is coming from Wisconsin. Um, there's mines uh, proposed in Minnesota and Iowa, some that are operational, but a lot of them that are, that are being fought right now, um, even maybe Arkansas, Missouri, other places where they're looking at starting this. And the big issue with that is, um, you know, it, it looks like mountaintop removal. I mean, they go in there and they just destroy the land to pull the sand out. Um, and they transport with all these trains and there's all this traffic and it creates all this dust and people are getting silicosis and so it's really bad. Um, and so that's kind of another thing that, that I don't think is talked about enough um, around this. So I just wanted to share those things with y'all. Um, yeah, so, so thank y'all for being here, man. Uh, we got a really uh, a great person here tonight. Um, I had the, the pleasure to meet Josh uh, once before, a couple years ago at the March on Blair Mountain uh, in West Virginia. We, uh, we took a historic route um, that coal miners had taken to, to fight against you know oppression in, in the coal fields uh, back in the 20s and we, we, we marched that and uh, he joined us there and I, I got to meet him and so um, gosh it was cool and uh, when you think about it you know one person can do a lot and, and it takes a whole team to really make things happen but this guy was like hey uh, you're doing really bad stuff in my backyard I'm gonna take a camera and I'm gonna film it and I'm gonna figure out what's going on and then he travels all around and uh, so, Josh, thanks for picking up a camera, and uh, it's good to have you here. All right. Thank you so much, and thanks to all the sponsors, and thanks to everyone who came out tonight. Um, I've, uh, it's true. About 2008, how many people here have seen the first movie? Okay. You don't need to have seen the first movie to understand or, or get this one. Um, but uh, many of you know that in 2008 we got a proposal um, in the Upper Delaware River Basin in Pennsylvania, right near the border of New York, to frack the entire river basin um, that serves water to 16 million people. At that time, I you know, had no idea what fracking was, I didn't know anything about uh, natural gas, wasn't particularly interested in it. But this came to my backyard and everybody all of a sudden was talking about this. And, you know, I wanted to go out as, I'm a filmmaker and I'm a theater director, but I wanted to go out and make, do something I'd never done before, which is make a documentary. And we started showing it in, like, little pieces as we got done with 10 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And we showed it, you know, in rooms with far less people than this to begin with. And we showed it, you know, on the back of a truck in the middle of, you know, uh, summer uh, on the banks of the Delaware River. Um, the film was completed, it got into Sundance Film Festival, it was bought by HBO, they put it into 40 million homes, it was nominated for an Oscar, it won an Emmy, um, and then I decided that the story wasn't over yet, and needed to go out there and make another film about why, if we had this national and international movement against fracking, why was nothing changing what was happening at the level of our government. So this is what's Gasland 2. Um, so I think, you know, as we've been on tour, I've, I've toured with the first film in 250 different cities. Um, and this film now, about 35 cities, we toured all across the United States starting in May. Uh, we started in a place called Normal, Illinois, yeah. at the Normal Theater. And that place was packed. Um, you know, we had sold the theater out in 10 days because Illinois was just about to open itself up for fracking and people were very, very concerned. Then we went out to Colorado um, where we saw huge crowds, a band movement um, in Colorado, an oil and gas producing state. Um, you know, then out to California to found Californians Against Fracking with 100,000 signatures on a petition to Governor Jerry Brown went all of the California coast. Then premiered the film on HBO, went on The Daily Show, Bill Maher, every news station you could imagine. Um, it was uh, unbelievably intense. Uh, the film was number one rated on all the document of all the documentaries on HBO this summer. Um, then we went to Europe, opened the film at the European Parliament, um, which was quite an honor, amazing, hosted by members of Parliament from France, from Denmark, and from uh, uh, the Netherlands. Um, <coughs> went across France to Germany, Czech Republic. Uh, just earlier this week, we're down in Texas, San Antonio, Dallas, um, Fort Worth. Last uh, two nights ago in Arkansas, and now we're here. It's been unbelievable. And it's been an amazing thing, and I'll show you some of the pictures from the tour of places, um, you know, that we've hit along the way. And it seems like, you know, I've been hearing a lot about, please come to Tennessee. We're 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 we're, we're, we're here. We're in trouble, <laughs> um, I, you know. And and we we have the uh, 
drilling and fracking industry descending on us in a way that we haven't before, and things are just getting started. So, you know, although this is a smaller evening tonight, it's just, it's, these are the kinds of times when we can actually have a discussion, and you can meet with the organizers, get involved, and then realize that, you know, you have to make this grow, and you have to make this move forward. Um, but I just want to let you know that, for me, all of this just starts with a simple series of questions. What is this? What are they proposing? What's happening? You know, and without a lot of bias, and with a lot of concerns and pros and cons on both sides. On the one hand, you know, the natural, beautiful, pristine area, which we'll, you'll see some of in, in my backyard. On the other hand, the offer was quite a lot of bit of money, people talking about that. And going into this question and trying to figure out what exactly was going on and who was telling the truth. Um, without a sense of bias, without a sense of, of needing to be an activist, all that stuff comes later. And going into this movie, I have the same sort of kinds of questions. What exactly is happening? Why haven't we seen change? And these, this is the result. So I hope you do enjoy the film. It's two hours long. The Avengers is two and a half hours. <laughs> I forgot all the way through that this is shorter. Um, and, <laughs> um, you know, we also have explosions. So, you know, bigger and better explosions than the first movie, which is a prerequisite for any sequel. You have to have bigger and better explosions. So we've got that covered. So, um, you know, uh, sometimes humor is the only way into things that are extremely difficult and, and dark. So hopefully you'll, you'll see it, you'll enjoy it. We'll have a great discussion after the film. So please do stick around for the Q&A. And thank you very, very much for being here.